Now, I'm sure most of you have probably learned about communism before and associate it with countries like the Soviet Union, China, and North Korea. But what if I told you all of these countries practice a form of communism that departs drastically from its core values put forth hundreds of years ago? Now, before we get into it, I want to thank you for watching Ben Explains. And if you like this video and want to see more content like it, hit the subscribe button down below. Okay, now let's get to it. The fundamental ideas of communism have been around since the Greek philosopher Plato, who argued that private ownership of goods would corrupt the individual and encourage selfishness. Plato also argued that possessions should be communally owned, but it wasn't until the 19th century that the idea of public ownership truly got popular when a German philosopher and writer named Karl Marx co-wrote Manifesto of the Communist Party with Frederick Engels in 1848. Karl Marx was born in 1818 and lived during the Industrial Revolution, where Marx witnessed firsthand how terribly treated the working class was. He began to write radically anti-capitalist works in Germany and was eventually forced to leave the country and move to London, where he lived the rest of his life. Marxism is an umbrella term based on Karl Marx's political, economic, and social ideas. While the name Marxism isn't all that revolutionary, some of his ideas were. So let's talk about them. Marx's view of capitalism was that of two classes, a rich upper class that controlled almost everything, including the means of production, and a lower working class he referred to as the proletariat, who worked for the upper class and eventually lost their sense of independence and became just another means of production. Marx wrote in his work, Capital, they mutilate the labor into a fragment of a man, deprive him to the level of an appendage of a machine. Marx thought the solution to this was a society that replaced private property and profit-based economics with public ownership, allocating resources based on a person's abilities and a person's needs, thus eliminating social and economic classes. The leaders of this society would be democratically elected and wouldn't make more than the workers they would lead. For the most part, Marx left out much of the details on how to accomplish this. But he did speculate that if it were to happen, it would happen in three stages. The first stage would be a revolution. Marx observed that history is marked by the working class overthrowing the ruling classes. He thought this would happen again, where the proletariat would overthrow the upper class. Following the revolution, there would be the second stage. And this stage would be a transitional stage, where there would still be some social class and people would be paid for work individually, but would have things like public education and gradual income tax. The final stage would be a state of true communism, where everyone is equal and taken care of. After Karl Marx died in 1883, several countries adopted communism. During the 20th century, as much as one third of the world was under a communist regime. During this time, Leninism came out of Russia, Stalinism followed it in the new Soviet Union, and Maoism came out of China all claiming to be based on the ideas presented by Marx. But all of these regimes mix in qualities of fascism, dictatorship, bureaucracies, and personal wealth to keep their leaders in power, turning into the type of societies that Marx spent his entire life opposing. Thanks again for watching Ben Explains. And if you liked this video, remember to click the thumbs up. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, comment them down below. And as always, if you want to see more videos of me explaining things, click that subscribe button. If you like this, may I suggest one of these?